Okay, welcome everybody to this evening's Ace Securities webinar. Tonight's webinar is a review of the recent Forex trading patterns, my top trading setups. So at the start of the month, I always look back at the previous month and have a look at the patterns that I teach. And have a review of the market structure that's been forming. And uh, by reviewing, can you see how you can improve your trading in hindsight? Make that your foresight as you're moving forward into the new month. So that's tonight's webinar. Tomorrow we've got live market analysis, 7 p.m. Sydney time. Just go to the webinar page to register your interest. All right, so let's get into tonight's webinar. Before we do, please read through the risk disclaimer. If you're new to the webinars, welcome. All right, let's move along. Now, if you don't know me, my name is Duncan Cooper. I'm the senior market strategist and trading mentor here at ACI Securities, and I'm a full-time trader. Been trading the Forex market now for more than 15 years, mentoring for more than 10. If you want to contact me, my email is there, duncan.cooper at acy.com. Through the week, you can connect with me at our website, acy.com, market news tab, at the YouTube channel for ACY, it's ACY Security Australia. Uh, you can connect with me on Twitter, on my own handles there. And through the week, you can connect with us in the Telegram channel for ACY Security, so our live interactive trading feed. You can connect with me in there too. If you want to get access, just contact Nathan Bray. I'll put his details in the chat in a moment. As well, if you want to get access to my chart layouts and templates for MT4, just contact Nathan. So I'll put his contact details in the chat now. If you need help setting up a demo account or a live account, just ask Nathan, he'll help you out with anything. So his details are there in the chat. Phone number, email, so on and so forth. And next week, we're just advertising this out now, but next week we've got our Inner Circle webinar. Usually that's just for account holders, but anybody at the webinar on the 14th, the seven o'clock webinar, will be able to move along to that webinar. I'll have the link for that webinar during that webinar. Uh, if you're an account holder, you can talk to Nathan. In this webinar, we normally have people on the mic talking about their trading. They can ask us anything they want about trading. And I'll do my best to help you, but we get people on the mic talking about their trading and help them where we can. All right, so that's next Wednesday, the 14th, 8 p.m. Sydney time. All right, let's get into tonight's webinar. So tonight is just looking back at last month. Of course, it's maybe easier to look and find trade setups historically, but of course you have to be able to do it as price is moving live. But if you have a set strategy or set patterns that you trade, after seeing them setting up time and time again, you should be able to start to spot them setting up in the live. But reviewing what happens Last month, it's always a good way of solidifying. And then can you see that happening next time? All right, so I'm gonna start with the Aussie again. And I'm gonna go about 50 minutes. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. I've got seven pairs here to review if we have time. All right, so I'm gonna start with the Aussie again. So what I'm gonna do, I've got blank charts. I'm just gonna go through them top down and show you what structure we have, what unfolded last month and uh, some of the Trades that I might be discussing with ones that I may have put out of the telegram through the month. So let's just go through the Aussie yen. Now I know we're moving up at the moment, but really the trend here is down from a monthly perspective. We've come down to lower bottoms. At some point, this is maybe going to put in a lower top. I actually thought maybe we had topped out. I was looking at this range from this high to low over the last few months. The weekly chart, that's been this range here. Now, of course, we're attempting at the moment to maybe move beyond this level. We may hold here and false break to move back down, but at the moment we're trying to move above. But last month I was focusing on this range here. Price was around about the 79% area of the, that range, trying to top out until this, this week's come around. And to the day chart, 
Last month we started, I'll also show where the month started. It started there, just so we got a reference. Okay, so early into the month, we had this candle here where we rejected, just there. This candle here. And at the time I was looking at this as a possible further 79% level of the range and price trading back down. And then I was looking at this area here. So I'm gonna get rid of that big fib. I might just draw a line across that range. That's the range I was, I was looking at. And price failed. There was this high here, this was March's high. This is February's high, this is January's high. I'm just gonna put that level in. This hit level here, that was March's high, 92.24. Often the high of the month is a very strong level of resistance. Or if it's a low of the month, strong support. So that was March's high. So you would expect when you get to a, a month's high that you're gonna get a reaction. And we got a significant rejection. So I was then looking at this move down. We, we moved down and then we rallied back up. And I put this out on Telegram, I'm pretty sure. I was looking for a sell up here at 79% level. In here, okay. And I pretty much just traded here the stop above the high. Now, the four hour chart, this is that area over here. So I, do, I just simply took a trade here, stop above the high. Now, if you wanted to wait to see where the price was going to start to hold there, you can see once we rejected that level, the next two candles, the four hour highs, or we're just trading at that level. So you had more than one or two opportunities there to trade at the 79% level before we then obviously moved down. Now, we didn't move down 79% retracement pattern. Okay, you're selling the retracement at 79. There it is, stop above the high. And your target is the low as the first target, the second target is the 127 extension. Now we didn't meet any of those levels, but the trade did move into profit. So at a worst scenario, you shouldn't have lost any money. And at a best scenario, hopefully you've managed to trade and lock some profit in. Now, what I also noticed was once we failed here, we traded down and then there was the opportunity. So I'm just gonna get rid of the big fib to look for a smaller 79% in here, okay? Now, the true reality is it, miss, it misses by a pip or two, all right? But if you're watching, I'm sure you could have clicked in and gone, okay, if it's not gonna hit 91.70, trade up to 91.68. You could have hopefully got on board in or around the area on that smaller retracement to then capture the move down. So what, what you'll often see, this would have been perfect if it traded exactly at the 79% level, just for my explanation, but sometimes the market doesn't give you perfection, is when you have the larger 79% retracement, so here's the larger one, So we're discussing there was the larger one and then often once you get the fail at the larger one price will come down and then often offer you a further smaller one okay in this case yes it missed a couple of pips but it's a good lesson of what can often happen all right so that was the first nice setup that occurred after we rejected at the start of the month at that march is high at 92.24 now it's worth just leaving that 92.24 on because we come back up and retest the same level again over here. All right, so I say this nearly every month, but the Aussie Yen loves the 79% retracement levels, okay? So if you're looking for something that you, can that you can monitor and trade potentially all the time, especially on the Aussie Yen, it, it loves the 79% levels, okay? So... I'm always monitoring the 79% levels on the Aussie end. So hello, hello there, how are you? 
All right, so let's just go back to the daily chart. Through the month, so this was the start of the month. We come back up to retest this level here. And it does, whilst it doesn't really look like it here, it does actually offer you a 79% retracement in this area on the four hour chart. So this is really structure here, March is high, failure, we come back up for another test, failure. So back to the four hour chart. Is this is these are almost equal highs, but at the time I was looking for this, this came down, so it failed at resistance. I was then looking for a seven amps retracement trade down. All right, now there's your seven nine percent level 92.13. Could have been selling there, stop above the high. It almost takes the high out, but doesn't, and then trades down. All right, so you're looking to sell at the 79, stop above the high, almost takes your stop out, and then trade down to your target 127 extension. All right, so there's another 79%. Now, if we look at these swings, I'm just going to delete these lines off. There's actually a bigger swing down to there, this whole move. And then I was also then monitoring this for another 79% move back up. So really you get a double top on the four hour chart here and we move down. I put that this out on Telegram watching for this to come up to the 79% level. Traded exactly to the 79% level here. All right, that's at 92 and seven fractional pips. Price comes up to 92 and four fractional pips. So, you know, if I've got the 79% fib there at 92, price trades up to 92. We trade down to the 127 extension. That happened last week or the week before, into, into the last week of, May. All right. Now that was a 79% level in here. It was also, if you go and have a look, I'm just pausing more on it. So then doing the fair, what is the criteria for putting the 100% in zero? How do we place it? If you're looking for a downward move, so a downward a retracement back up for sell, let me go to the day chart because as I'm talking about this pattern forming here, I was also looking at this being a little left shoulder, a head here, a head hitting the retest of that resistance level. And then I was anticipating that we could form a head and shoulder, right shoulder here. All right, now, Warren, you're saying drawing the fib, if you're drawing it in a downtrend, so I was looking on my four hour chart. I was looking at this as the move down. So drawing the fib to measure retracement back up, you draw the fib from high to low. The hundred will be at the high, the zero will be at the low, and you do the opposite in an uptrend, okay? And then looking for that right shoulder to form, came up to the 79 fraction above that area here. And then we traded down to 127 extension. So selling at the 79, stop above the high. All right, so I've just run through one, two, there's at least three if not four seven nine percent levels i've had one one there two three four there as i say the aussie yen loves the seven nine percent levels and there's also that head and shoulder pattern there for me all right now that head and shoulder pattern if i just reflect on it textbooks would say that and i say this when i teach head and shoulders textbooks would say that we should be Moving back up from a lower point, I don't really care about that too much. I care much more about what's happening is why the pattern's forming. So we have a left shoulder here, this head 
is potentially forming a double top up here and it's failing at resistance, all right? So I don't really care that when, when this price comes back up here, it's coming up from a higher bottom. I don't really care about that. Um, textbooks would say you, you need to be coming up from a lower bottom, but I don't really care. What's more important to me is why is price failing? All right, so I was looking at that as a head and shoulder pattern there. Is what, you know, why is price failing? Price is failing at your March is high here, which is your resistance structure. Okay. Now, ultimately, you know, on Thursday, this was looking like it was putting in a lower top, lower bottom to move down. But interest rates have come up and we've obviously moved up and things have, you know, things can change quite quickly. And, you know, that's the way trading works. But some nice 79 percent retracement patterns there on the Aussie end. Uh, Warren, you're saying, you, so you're talking about, so which highs or lows do you choose to draw the fib across? Well, ultimately you should be trying to draw it with the trends, but sometimes it's not that simple. Uh, but in a textbook scenario, if we have an uptrend, let's talk about an uptrend we have if we're just dealing with a pure trend then we measure in the pullback so in an uptrend you draw the free from low to high all right you're going from high bottom to higher top all right and then you're measuring the pullback to the 62 i measure it to the 62 of the 79 percent level and vice versa in a downtrend. If you see a clear downtrend, a lower top, lower bottom, you're dragging it the opposite way. So if I just draw that out as well. I'd say that's a lower top. Price starts to come back up, you draw your fib from the lower top to the lower bottom, like so. All right. Hopefully that helps you. Although, what I will do though is if I see price fail at a clear known resistance level, like it failed here, I will just draw my fib from that high down to that low to measure this retracement. It doesn't matter to me then whether this is a lower point because what I'm, what I'm first looking for is to see a failure drop and then I'm looking at the rally just to, just to be corrective. And I don't really care if it's not coming up from a lower bottom because often it will fail at a 79% fib as it comes back up. All right, but that's all that comes from experience. So if you struggle with fibs, look to just draw it purely across the trend. All right, let's move along. So that was the Aussie yen. At the moment, just you know, from a, the perspective of the fib from the highest time frame at the moment, as we're heading into the new month, the trend is actually down potentially there on the monthly still, even though we're moving up and we're heading towards a 62% level if we can get there at 93.70. So we may, I'm just monitoring this at the moment for the long term, I've moved down. This could be now corrective up to maybe a 62% retracement. So then maybe wanting to move down this way. All right. We'll have to wait and see how that maps out over the next few months. That's how, what's what I'm monitoring there on the monthly chart. All right, let's move into the Aussie dollar. As again, I'm going to start with blank charts rather than have it all mapped out. So I can take you through and I'll just go through as many as I can. I've just spent the best part of 15 minutes on the first one. So we'll just go through the ones as time permits. Now, the Aussie dollar, it is moving up after the interest rate decision. And people may well think this has turned into an uptrend. But, you know, if you're looking at your monthly chart here, it's more downtrend than uptrend. You have a lower top, 
lower bottom in actual this failure here if you put your fib in we've had a 62 percent failure there so long term we may be you know we've structure wise if we take take you through it highest time frame structure is potentially moving downwards all right unless some, something significantly changes all right so the monthly trend there is down and the weekly trend it got mixed to slightly up at one point this is where we came up last month to try to take out that high so on the day chart the start of the month month started down here okay now the best trade setup was actually at the top of the range so if you draw your resistance in there was a resistance area here at 68.11 there's a high here and a high here so even if you think this is an uptrend right i say this all the time we'll just keep one line on here for the moment we got we go above that top Put in a minor high bottom here we go above that top we try to trade above this area here but trends will stop at support or resistance okay so i would definitely say a novice retail trader would think this is an uptrend and we're moving up however higher time frame like the monthly trend structure is down so there's a top here 6805 pretty much the figure I talked about the figure last last week's webinar and there's more resistance there at 67.93 so we came up to 67.93 a very strong resistance area lots of highs that have been forming a low that we broke below there's another high here as well to the left so what we really did is we came up and there was the possibility that a price action would form we came up to this area a double top and i put out the day before we hit this level i think it was i think it was on oh we think we hit this level and the next day this red candle here i said watch for a retest of 68. all right there was the retest on those two next days at 68. so getting in this area number of ways I like to look at it. If I think it's a very strong area of resistance, I'll just sell at the level of the area with a 100 pip stop above. So I was looking at 68. So I actually sold at 68, stop at 69. Price went up to 68.18. And then we, we obviously failed and moved down and I've managed that trade to, to a profit. Now, on the four hour chart, this is the area where we failed. Now I would have liked to have looked for a 79 cent retracement level, didn't quite come. So if you were trying to look for a 79 cent retracement, so I would have drawn my fib from a high down to low and the first low that got formed and the drop down was just there. All right. Now we only come up to the 62% level and the starting area of the resistance is 67.93. We come up to 67.95 now i actually just saw i sold before i sold in this area here on the way up got in at 68 so i was already in but if i wasn't in i would have, would have been looking to trade the rally back up to the 79 percent level that was at 68.02 never quite got there so if you're looking for a 79 percent retracement you wouldn't have got a fill okay now, if you were a bit wise, you may have realized that you've got resistance at 67.93 and the 62% level at 67.90. And if you're a little less greedy to get the best price, then you could have sold a 62% retracement to get yourself set for the move down. So I actually got in just trading the level at 68. You could have looked to trade a 79% level, you would have missed that one. You could have looked to trade the 62% level and you would have got that. Or you could have looked to trade the retest of the resistance, the first level there, and you could have traded there. All right. 
So that was a, you know, from the point of view of watching what price does, we're going to have a look at the New Zealand dollar next, because what I want to try to emphasize to you is price, whether it's on one pair or multiple pairs, price is repeating the same kind of patterns all the time across pairs. So here on the Aussie dollar, we form a double top or a failure at resistance, a strong known area of resistance. All right. Now, a highly correlated pair, the New Zealand dollar, offered a similar trade. All right, there was resistance there. That high just here is the main level. But again, if we go from a top-down perspective, so you understand what the trend and structure is, this is lower top, lower bottom, lower top on the monthly chart. We've had very similar to the Aussie, a 62% retracement here, held at resistance there on the monthly. All right. And then we started to trade down, got a little bit sideways like the Aussie dollar's been sideways, but we came back up to this top through the month of May. Their chart. So the start of the month was somewhere down here. Previous month, we failed up here. All right, that was at 63.79. And I put out, can't remember what day it was. Uh, it may have been this, I think it was this blue day. I said, watch for a failure at 63.79. That day went up to 63.80 and we closed there. And I, the next day I was saying, are we failing up at 63.79? We traded once more back up to 63.79 and then obviously sold off. So again, you could trade at that level, use a 100 pip stop above, price you know, moves down from that level a good, probably 300 pips, I think it was. Trading down, almost 400 pips. Pretty much 400 pips, all right? So if you traded there, it offered you 400 pips for 100 pip risk. Not saying you would have maybe taken 400 pips, but you could have you know, had a risk reward of one to two, risking 100, made 200, risk reward of one to two. Now in this area here, you could obviously look closer, Let's drop it down to four hour charts. We'll just actually, we'll actually have a look in that area on a 15 minute chart. You know, if you want to get tight trading in that area, I broadcasted this in Telegram to say watch 63.79. And I think we have to go forward, it's jump me back. All right, here's the area. All right, so we failed there the day before. We come down, we come back up. So you'll often get this. This is some news event, spikes it up to that level. Come back down. All right, when we come back up again, we try to trade through and then we, then we fail. Now you could trade some form of trend line break Bit difficult for me to determine where that is because there's these lines in the way but some form of trend line would have been coming up here all right that gets broken after the failure you could draw you could do a fib rally kind of sell price moves down you look for a 62 or 79 percent retracement on the fib come up just about the 62 level, and then we trade down. Now, if you don't get in on the first trend line break, if you don't get in on this fib retracement for a sell, for example, you could look for a swing point break, trend line break. See how we come back up through here in some form of a higher bottom, higher top. 50 minute trend changes when we get a trend line break. We get a trend line break here, we get a swing point break there. So. Really, there was an entry in through here for a sell. Okay, 
stop above there. So that's how you can break down an entry there on the 50 minute chart from that resistance level. So a price just comes up to a major top, holds the structure. It actually tests it two days in a row and then it turns to the downside and then you should be looking for a short. Now, if you don't want to trade on the 50 minute chart, four hour chart perspective here. In fact, I need to go to the day chart first of all. Form some form of head and shoulder pattern here. So we have an area of resistance here, on old top. You could have been looking for this right shoulder to form here, that being the head just there. So price sells down. I would be monitoring this range as price moves back up. All right, now we come up to the 62% level, which pretty much overlaps or very close to the, where the left shoulder is. So that's where you'd expect maybe the right shoulder would form. And price starts to hold there and starts to turn down. Now, I would generally, even though I know where the right, sh where, where the left shoulder is, I would generally, if it was me trading this at the time, I would be looking at the 79% level just because I like the 79% level. It offers me better risk to reward. So I would have been, first of all, still probably looking up there for an entry, but that entry obviously didn't come to play. If you looked at the 62 level, that would have worked just fine. But once you start to see that the 62 level may be holding this market and we sell down, then what you can do, like I said to you before, often when we get a large 79% failure, we then get a smaller 79% failure. Well, of course, here we fail at the 62 level, but then what happens is price pulls back and then rallies. So we pull back. I would draw a, a smaller fib across that range and we rally back up to the 79% level. Put your stop above the high. We don't take out the high and then price turns over to the downside. So there's a smaller 79% level in there that you could trade at 62.94 to trade down, okay? All right, so a number of ways that you could have traded, but the, the actual big trade of the month for the pair was this forming that potential double top up here. All right, and it was the same pattern exactly forming at the exact same time as the Aussie dollar was forming its pattern. All right, so that's what I spotted and saw. Put that on to, out on Telegram, watching 63.79 for failure. And of course it failed up there. All right, let's, let's head over into Euro dollar, which did have a nice sell off last month. And again, we'll start from the highest time frame. This is going to show you a higher time frame, seventy-nine percent retracement. That's the high of last year to the lower last year. That's the range of last year. Okay. Over the last couple of months, we've been holding at the seventy-nine percent level of last year's trading range. So look at look at that range as last year's can. That's the candle of last year. We've traded all the way back up inside the range of last year's candle, held at the 79% level and started to turn over. All right. So weekly chart, we're getting rejections up there over, over four weeks. That candle rejects the 79 level inside candle. That candle rejects the 79 level. That candle rejects the 79 level. This is the start of the month here. So late April, Mid to late April into May, we start to reject up here at 110.75. And we start to reject this weekly top here. Now, the thing I really want to stress to you is I, I was talking for quite a while, a number of months about this, the position of this pair within the range of last year. So that's the candle. This is the candle of last year. That we could fail at 79% level to trade all the way down, maybe to the low of, of last year. We don't know if that's going to happen because a lot of time is going to need to transpire before that can come to fruition. But 
if you know if you understand how to use Fibonacci, whether you, you draw it across a range of last year or you draw it across a four hour range, it all works the same in general terms. Price will pull back to 62% level or a 79% level, hold, fail, and then move back within the dominant trends. Last year, we had a down candle. Are we going to have a down candle this year? All right. So anyway, all unfolding at the 79% level of last year's candle range, starting to fail, and this weekly high here, 110.33. So today chart. Now, what happens on the day chart? Uh, let's just map out where May is. All right, May starts around about here, okay? Just as a reference. So this, this final stab up here is actually May's price action. Now, the key thing that I was watching was what was price doing at this top, 110.33. And I knew about the 79% retracement level there. So I had two things that I was watching. Uh, I was more focused on the resistance level because that's a definite high that's been formed, whereas a FIB level is just a mathematical point calculated on the chart. It's, it's not a physical resistance level. It's a potential resistance level. However, we do start to form resistance up there at 110.75 when we form, form some kind of triple top fair up here. But the thing I want to really talk about as an exercise for learning on the euro dollar is the way that price breaks false breaks resistance and then it and then it gets retested as resistance to fail and then as price moves down support levels break and then they become resistance to trade off off of to trade down that's what i want to focus on and if you if you can start to get good at this, you're going to start to see where you should be trading, be it to the upside or the downside. Now, this is to the downside. But what I want to focus on is you can see this, these two candles here. See how we get kind of railroad tracks to go back below 110.33. Then these two days, let's drop down to the four-hour chart. All right. These are the days or the price action here where you needed to look to sell at 110.33. As I've been saying before, you want to take a positional play. You could have been selling up, selling in this area here at 110.33 on these two days with a 100 pip stop. Now, if you did that, price has been down since that point into the new month now. We've been down approximately 400 pips. All right, so that would be a risk reward of one to four at the moment. All right, you don't have to be spending your whole life on a 50 minute chart to make money in the market. If you're getting it at the right points, have you know, a wide stop and allow the market to, yes, it's changing trend maybe and allow it to do its thing. All right, so I just wanna go to the day chart and just show you that of course, when price is up here, all these levels are potential support on the way down. Support, 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 support. All right. Even this high over here has been working as support and then resistance over here. That's a weekly high. Now, but once support breaks, watch how it becomes resistance. Okay, so there's a low, we break below this low here. 110.909. See how we break below, it becomes resistance there. That's That actually topped at 109, which I put out in Telegram. I said, watch 109, I said, watch 10900 to 10909. All right, so once we, break, once we break support, it becomes resistance. Then we break below this low here. one. Once we break below support, that high is at 108.30 and eight fractional pips. The resistance level is at 108.31. See how that becomes resistance? That's where you should be looking for yourself to trade down. So there, 
And there on a lower time frame, you should be looking for your sell. And we can have a look at those two areas. So is that area there? We can look at that on a lower time frame. Here's the four hour chart. Just so you can see what price looks like, but we can, we can break these areas down into it, you know, All right, we might have a closer look on the 50 minute chart. How could you have gotten in on a very tight perspective? All right, let me just scroll back. Might just squash it in. All right, the first level is 109.09. So this is that day here. Now, during the last month, I took you through, you know, trading around the figure. So there's, there's the resistance level that we got a fraction short of, but broken support becomes resistance. Now we get a little bit short of it. We only get up to a little bit above 109. But there's a red pivot point. There's the figure. You know, just watching for a trend line break and then price trades down. All right. Then let's go forward. We get a clear break below the next level, 108.31. Price hits it here. Okay. Now a few times we, you may have thought, okay, are we going to get there or not? You know, you could be looking for some form of trend line break through here to trade down. Came all the way down to 107.63 down here. Then when we come up short again, one or two pips, if you waited for a trend line break, trend line break kind of happens in this area here. Stop above the high, that trades down into some profit for you. Here, where we pretty much hit it to the pip, may miss it by half a pip. You know, you could then be looking for another trend line break. Now, this particular one, trend line breaks in this area here. If you put your stop above the high, it does work out okay, but that would be quite a large, it's quite a, a large, well, you're not risking any more than 20 pips. It looks larger than it is. So that only requires about a 20 pip risk. These two trades here require less just to get in. All right, but this is showing you how broken support becomes new resistance on the way down. And then you're just looking for price to come back up to fail at the level or within a few pips. You can see that it failed three times. All right, let's go back to the day chart. Just wanted to see if there's any more of those opportunities that you could be understanding the structure and simple bro broken structure becomes the opposite polarity. So broken support becomes resistance with that unfolding downtrend. Now I can see another example, but that might be in the new month. I don't want to talk about the new month's trading. All right, that's in the new month's trading, but you can see an area of broken support here. See how it became resistance there in the new month to trade down, all right? So if you get good at support and resistance and understanding the trend and structure, you're gonna see broken structure that was support become resistance and it offers you the trading opportunities that you, you might be wanting to look for through the month. And now I actually sold it up here on these, these two days here where we were rejecting 110.33. I actually sold it at 110, stop at 111. When I was watching this price action here, failing at this top. All right, so that was a euro dollar. How are we going for time? So I might just go through one more pair. I'm going to go through the dollar CAD just to maybe emphasize what happened last month. And you know, the purpose of going through here is obviously, hopefully you're learning something as we're looking at the market historically. But as well, the fact that the market's 
quite often we're just repeating what it did last month. And I don't know what whether this is going to run true yet, but the dollar CAD is rather range bound. All right, if we look on the weekly chart here, it's rather range bound. As of when we're in the previous month, support was here at 133.01. And resistance was up here at uh, 136.67. And it's just rather range bound. It's, it's very difficult at the moment to determine is it going to break to the upside or the downside. Now, the new month started. There. Excuse me a moment. All right, so that's where the new month started and we cut, we came down into this area here, a little bit short of weekly support. Okay, but there's weekly resistance, at the top weekly support down here. So when I saw this candle reject here, I started to think, oh, okay, have we just missed the bottom? Are we going to move back up to the top? All right. Now, dropping down to the four hour chart, this price structure is here, it starts to form. So, price and your weekly level is just here. So, we've got a fraction short. So, I started to think, okay, maybe we've, we've missed. Now, I didn't trade this, but I did discuss it in one of the live Forex webinars and said, watch. In this area now, price moved up. So we had a move up. I said, watch for a 79 cent pullback. After that day chart rejection was showing, I said, watch for a 79 cent pullback for a move up. So there's your 79 cent pullback. And of course, then we, we obviously move up through the month. All right. But there was a trade set up. That pull back here. So you're buying at a 79% level, stop below the low. And price, you know, short term target would be 127 extension. But if you were cognizant of the fact that we were at the bottom of the range, back to the day chart, that we were at the bottom of the range here, your 79% entry was round about here on the four hour chart. Really, you should have been focusing on trying to hold your trade, trade back up to the top of the range where price obviously failed at the top of the range. Okay. So it was a nice little 79 percent retracement after holding just ahead of support there. And that candle rejected to start to tell you that maybe we were, we were reversing. All right. Now, in my mind, we're still range bound, but drawing a fib across last month. And I just wanted to maybe talk about is the same sort of thing going to occur this month? All right, in that, that's the range for last month. And we're just, the market's just asking itself can it hold at this support level, 134.04? Or not. And just on the, you know, we have that support level just there, 13404. There's one, there's another one to the left there. All right. And there's a seven percent fib there. So this is not too dissimilar to what happened the previous month. We we pull back to support and move all the way back up to the top of the range. Now we're pulling back to support here. Are we going to move all the way back up the range? So you can start to monitor this. At the moment, I don't know if it's going to hold here yet. The four-hour chart here, still structurally to the downside. But, you know, if we close back above 134.04 today, and maybe then over the next two or three trading days, if this, let's say this holds here at the 79% level, 
Now, from a trading perspective, you could be a buyer at the 7% level here right now, putting your stop below here. But if you wanted to look for a tighter setup, this pullback that we're having, similar to last month, you can wait for this four hour chart to spring back up if that's what, what it wants to do. And then you look for a 79% pullback like so, which would line up with support if that's the way it forms. For then, you know, do we then move all the way back up this way through the course of the month? So just wanted to show you what happened last month is a similar sort of thing on the dollar CAD there starting to form over the next week. You can start to monitor, you know, monitor that and see what happens. All right. All right, any, any final questions before we finish up? Hopefully that gave you a good review of what happened last month and you may have learned something from it that you can, you know, add to your processes. And, you know, if you can start to see what's happening past tense, can you start to rather look, look at it in hindsight? Can you start to see it as your foresight? Okay. All right, while I'm waiting for a final question or not, uh, just to give you a heads up, tomorrow we have coming more live market analysis at 7 p.m. Sydney time. So we'll have a look at what the market is. Market's a little bit range bound at the market from a market's perspective. We don't have a lot of news coming out too much. Let's just have a quick check. Don't have any US news until tomorrow, 10.30 p.m. Queensland time. So... There's not a lot of US news at the moment. It's, there's some heavy news coming out next week, but this week there's not too much news, so not too much to drive it. So we're a little bit up and down the range of the day before. You can tell at the moment if we go to my other charts, I can see the pound dollar. It's trading down close to lower yesterday. It's trading up now, approximately up to the 79% level of the range of yesterday. There it is, we're almost back up to the 124.48 level where I said, I put it on Telegram yesterday, watch 124.48 to fail at, trade down, and we did. So we know we might touch 124.48 again today and fail, just touching the 79% level there. And the euro dollar, it's a little bit less range bound. I was looking, I'm look, been looking up here for a failure today, but we haven't got there. But you can see we've been moving down and moving back up. It's a little rangy at the moment uh, there's no major us dollar news to drive price action in a strong fashion but i can see another you know if you just monitor the 79 percent retracements whether it's intraday or across the larger ranges there's a 79 percent level I can, I can eye them up without using the fib intraday at the moment on the euro dollar as i just showed you on the pound dollar we just tagged the 79% level of high to low of yesterday. In yesterday's live webinar, I was doing it through here. I said I would monitor today the range of, of I said tomorrow, which is now. I said I would monitor yesterday's high to low, high to low for a retracement back up to the 62 and the 79. Where are we right now? The 79% level. All right. I didn't know it's going to do that, but I know. Most days, if we if we trade down, put in the, the high to low, we will trade back up to the 62 and the 79 percent area or levels of the range of the previous day. So especially when the market's a little bit range bound, we will move back up to the 79 level. And there it is. All right. OK, everybody, hopefully you got some good notes there that you can maybe take away with you to uh, add to your trading. Thanks very much for hanging out with me. Tomorrow, live market analysis at 7 p.m. Sydney time. So if you have the time, I look forward to seeing you then if you can join me. All right, everybody, have a great day wherever you are. Thank you for your company. I look forward to seeing you next time.